Well, hello all and welcome to another video teaching going along with our Fear Free Year Bible Study. This is the Bible study where we're taking a look at all the different verses in the Bible which are instructive to us and how to live without fear and worry and anxiety in our present day and age. And for today's video teaching, we're going to go back into the Old Testament and we are going to see a fear free verse of encouragement coming to the King of Judah uh, from the Lord. And it's going to be instructive to us as we get into it. So let's Let's just jump on in we're going to be in chapter 7 of the book of Isaiah and just as a little background here the, the king is King Ahaz and he is the king of the southern kingdom of Judah this is after the United Kingdom of Israel had divided and Ahaz is the king of the southern kingdom of Judah and he has heard rumor that the king of the northern kingdom of Israel has teamed up with the king of Syria and they're coming to attack Jerusalem and this is just terrible because um, obviously it's brother against brother. The northern kingdom of Israel is, uh, you know, part of the the tribes of of Jacob, and and here they are coming to attack their brethren down in the south. And but aside from that, they've elicited elicited the help of a foreign nation, and so the king of the southern kingdom is quite. Uh, afraid. So let's just go into chapter 7 of Isaiah. We'll start at just verse 2 with that background, all right? When the house of David was told Syria is in league with Ephraim, and when I say the house of David, that's the house of the southern kingdom of Judah, was told Syria is in league with Ephraim. Ephraim is one of the tribes of the northern kingdom. The heart of Ahaz, that's the king, and the heart of his people shook as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. So the king of Judah is frightened, along with all the people of Judah. They are frightened of this attack that they've heard is going to happen. Verse 3, And the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out and meet Ahaz, you and Shear Jashub, your son, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool of the highway to the washer's field, and say to him, now, I'm just going to stop right there just to say, here's the Lord sending the prophet Isaiah to speak to King Ahaz because the Lord has seen that that King Ahaz is, is afraid. And isn't that beautiful that the Lord sees his servant here, the king of Judah, is afraid and he sends the prophet to him. Now, I wanted to stop along with just saying that, to say, um, sometimes I think, in my mind, I've always thought, well, here are these prophets, and they're just, you know, guys, and they, they have no families, and they're they're out there, and they're a little bit crazy, and they're, they're doing the Lord's work. Well, here you can see that Isaiah had a son, which means he had a wife. And so Isaiah, a, a prophet of the Lord, he's a family guy, and I just think it's you know, sometimes you got to put in your mind that these are these were regular men and they had regular lives and they were called by the Lord to share his word with people. And so in this instance, God says, take your son with you and, and go do this work for me. So it's like, bring your son to work day for Isaiah. And um, off he goes to give a message to King Ahaz. And uh, we'll go to verse four and it says, and say to him, this is God says, and say to him, be careful, be quiet, do not fear, and do not let your heart be faint because of these two smoldering stumps of firebrands at the fierce anger of Rezin and Syria and the son of Remaliah. Because Syria with Ephraim and the son of Remaliah has devised evil against you, saying, let us go up against Judah and terrify it and let us conquer it for ourselves, and set up the son of Tabeel as king of the, in the midst of it. So the Lord has spoken this fear-free verse to King Ahaz, saying, don't just be careful, be quiet, don't be afraid, and don't let your heart be faint because of these two, these two kings, firebrands, smoldering stumps, uh, coming coming to attack Jerusalem. So God is basically saying, don't worry about it. This is this is not going to come to fruition. Don't fear. Just be be quiet and be careful and everything is going to be all right. And and he goes on to say in verse 7, thus says the Lord God, 
it shall not stand, it shall not come to pass. For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is resin. And within 65 years, Ephraim will be shattered from being a people. Now that is a prophecy of what was going to happen to the northern kingdom of Israel. And that is exactly what happened. Within 65 years, the northern kingdom of Israel is taken over by the Assyrian Empire. So God is telling the king of Judah what is going to happen. And that does come to pass, as every prophecy of the Lord does come to pass with 100% fruition. This one does come to pass. And verse 9, And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Rem Remaliah. And, and then it goes on to say these words. God says, If you are not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all. I'll say it again. If you are not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all. These are the words of the Lord coming through Isaiah. And isn't that amazing that God is saying something very practical? He's saying, if your faith is not firm, you're going to be unstable in all other areas. It's faith that keeps you stable in the face of fear and in the face of everything in your life. It's your faith. And so this is a really practical bit of wisdom advice. I'm surprised more Bumper stickers don't say it. Um, if you're not firm in faith, you will not be firm at all. I, I personally do not know how people without faith remain calm at all, given our present day and age, given the fact that so many trials and tribulations come to each person's life. Um, how can they stand firm when they have no faith in a God that loves and cares for them? And this, these words coming right from God are very interesting because within our Bible, we see that, that God says that it's faith that, that pleases him. I've heard many people say things like, God is not moved by your need, he's moved by your faith. And so here's God himself pointing out the fact that it's faith that he is looking for, and it's faith that is going to keep you stable. Now, as you go, go on reading, you're going to see in this chapter one of the most famous prophecies in your entire Bible. And you might not put it together with this particular incident because it's so famous in another context that most people have no idea that it's coming from the book of Isaiah and coming at this time when Isaiah is speaking to King Ahaz. The next thing that comes is the Lord speaking to Ahaz and saying, ask me for a sign. Ask me for a sign that you can be, have faith that what I'm going to say is true, that what I've said is true, that these two are not going to come against you. Ask me for a sign and I will show it to you so you can be firm and not be unstable, but you can be firm and assured that this is not going to happen. And King Ahaz says, I'm not going to ask you for a sign. He says, I'm not going to test the Lord, basically, which is at, at the heart of it sounds really good. I am not going to test you, Lord. But, but God has asked him to ask for a sign, a sign of hope, a sign that he can have faith in what's going to come, a sign that will give him the stability that he needs to stand in the face of uncertain future. And Ahaz says, no, I'm not going to ask for a sign. And so Isaiah, the Lord through Isaiah says, well, then I'm going to give you a sign myself. I am going to give you a sign. And do you know what that sign is? I'll read it for you. Verse 14, therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. That is the sign that the Lord says he's going to give Ahaz so that Ahaz can have hope and can have faith in the future that is predicted for him. And um, that is obviously a prediction of the Messiah to come, the virgin birth of Jesus. And so it's, it's, a, it's interesting to say, well, how is that going to be a sign for Ahaz? Well, it isn't going to be a sign for Ahaz. It's, it's a sign for, for those 
people who were at the time of Jesus's birth. But what God is saying is, I'm going to give a sign of hope. I'm going to give a sign of faith. I'm going to give a sign of assurance for you that I am going to take care of everything. I am going to keep everything, as I said, uh, peaceful, and I'm going to make everything come to pass that I have said. So God is just saying, the sign that I'm going to give you is a sign of the Messiah, the sign of the Messiah. What better sign can you have to keep firm and stable than the sign of the Messiah, that, that sign that the Savior has come, the Savior of the world is here. A virgin birth is going to happen, that, and that should give you nothing but hope and faith and stability in your life. And if you do not have hope and faith and stability, I would ask yourself, do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that a virgin conceived a son at at the behest of the, the Lord himself? She gave birth to the Lord, the Savior of the world. Um, do you believe it? Do you believe that Jesus is who he says he was? Do you believe that he came to take away your sin and wipe you clean so that you can one day go to heaven and live there eternally with God? Because when you have that kind of faith in the Messiah, everything going on in the world, everything going on in your life becomes much less tumultuous. Things get much more stable when you know that you have a God that loved you enough to send his son to this earth to die and suffer a, a horrific death for you because he wants you in heaven with him. That should give you, uh, make you breathe a, a sigh of relief, uh, uh, let your anxieties quiet, be, be peaceful, as the Lord said to King Ahaz, uh, calm you right down because with 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 this knowledge with the prophecy of what is to come for you because you believe in Jesus everything else just fades away Every, you know i'm not going to say that things don't happen in life and and might ruffle you a little but when you sit back and you think i've got jesus he's on my side he loves me and no matter what happens on this earth i'm going to be with him forever in eternity the the prediction the prophecy of your future your assured future, that sign that came, that, that Jesus came and, and came to this earth, when you have that, everything else just, it gets a whole lot less scary. And so I hope that you believe in the sign that came, uh, the virgin birth that gave, that produced Jesus. And uh, I hope that today you will just be firm in your faith so that you can be firm in everything else. Just be firm in your faith in Jesus so you're not unstable in any other ways in your life. Your faith is what's going to keep you steady. So just stay firm in your faith, as the Lord said, so that you'll be firm in all other ways. All right? I hope this is helpful, and I hope to see you next time. It's in Jesus' name. I'm doing it all. Bye now.